We just thank everybody for joining online that, that uh, loves to be with us. We welcome and love you on this very special Father's Day. So blessings to all the dads. Happy Father's Day. So we're going to talk about our Heavenly Father and His presence today. We want a manifestation of the presence of the Lord. And we can have it, okay? You know, I, I, re I recall a, a, a scene in a movie on Winston Churchill called The Darkest Hour. And he was, he was having a conversation with the prime minister. And the prime minister was asking him about his family. And he made a few comments about his mom. And then he said his dad was much like God, busy elsewhere. In other words, not involved in his life. So that image of God being busy elsewhere is wrong. It's not accurate. Our Heavenly Father wants to be involved in our daily lives, in our daily conversations, in our cookouts. He loves to have for you to have a cookout. Just invite him. He wants to be present. He wants to bless our fellowship, our family times, our relaxed times. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I love this phrase I heard about a year ago. He wants our prime time, not just our downtime. Give him our best. So let's, let's focus on the scripture this morning. You have the notes so we can go quickly. Exodus uh, 33, uh, 16. For how then can it be known that I have fa found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us? And I have that underlined and in bold. So that we and I and your people may be distinguished from all other people who are upon the face of the earth. We are distinguished and can be distinguished, should be distinguished by the very manifest presence of the Lord. His presence with us. You know, when, when uh, everybody else is in a rage, we can be full of peace. Tranquility coming in the opposite spirit. It's very real. The presence of the Lord is practical. It's not something that's religious uh, for religious people to be religious about. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord is practical. And if you're taking notes at home, that's the title of today's message. The presence of the Lord is practical. Okay? So just say practical out loud, will you? Practical. I love it. Matthew 1, 23, behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Twice uh, we're referred to as the temple. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is with us. He's not far away. Jesus repeatedly said the kingdom of God is near. He's right here with us. So if we begin each day, meditate through the day, go to sleep at night, confessing the Lord is with us, it'll change everything. I promise you, it is a practical thing to focus on the presence of God. Uh, number two, we want to break off a lukewarm spirit, being lukewarm toward the things of God. I want to submit to you, and, and it's sad to say, but the truth is, in America, most of the church is still very lukewarm. However, there is an awakening that's begun. There is an awakening that's begun in our land. And as I've had the privilege to travel and, and speak from coast to coast, uh, 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 the northeast to the uh, southern California, Florida to Oregon, uh, Washington State. As the Lord has given me these opportunities from coast to coast, I've been delivering this message that he's given to me. And I'm going to say it again today. If God would have spared Sodom for just 10 righteous ones, the city of Sodom, I think he would have gone to one if Moses had kept, inter I mean, Abraham had kept interceding. Uh, uh, but Abraham stopped at 10 for whatever reason. If he would have spared Sodom for 10 righteous ones, surely he's going to hear the cries of hundreds of thousands, even millions in America today, crying for revival. Amen? Yeah. 
Go ahead and clap to the Lord for that. He is not the kind of God that will ignore the cries of his children. So don't give up, no matter how bad it is. And, and I know it's gotten bad. It, it's going to get worse. All over the popular culture, they are criticizing anyone who disagrees with men dressing up like women, full of makeup, doing readings to elementary school children. If you disagree with that, you are being called immoral. Now, I'm going to take it straight on. Listen, that is debauchery, that is wickedness, that is perversion, that is evil. And I know what I'm saying is not politically correct, but I'm telling you the truth is men don't need to dress up in drag and read to little children in elementary and kindergarten. That's wrong. It's wrong, and it is evil. Okay, it's evil. I am not inciting violence. Don't don't accuse me that I know I'm going to get mail and stuff. I know I'm going to. It's okay. I'm not talking about being violent. I'm just telling you that it is evil. And those of you that are promoting that, I'm telling you, you are fulfilling uh, what the prophet Isaiah said: "Woe to those who call evil good and good evil." Okay, I'm I'm just straight up. You need to hear the truth. You know, I'll, it, the day may come when I'm, I'll be put in jail for saying these things. That's okay. I'll just start a bigger jail ministry than we have now. Going to the devil in his eyes. And you're not going to stop the preaching of, of the word. Okay, that was for free. No charge. Breaking off a lukewarm spirit. This persecution will break it off. But let's look at Matthew ch chapter 24, verse 12. Jesus said, because of lawlessness is increased, he's talking about the end times, and this certainly describes our country right now, lawlessness is increasing. When people with masks are walking into stores with trash bags and just loading up their trash bags and walking out, and they're getting away with it, that's called lawlessness. So lawlessness is increasing. Jesus said it would. This is what he says. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. That's not the church. I'm telling you, the church is catching fire right now, okay? Good things are coming. There is an awakening that's brewing right now. Revelation 3, uh, 14 to 16. To the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God says this, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. So lovingly, I want to say to us, break off of yourself lukewarmness. I'm telling you, don't be lukewarm. Ask the Lord to give you the fire of his Holy Spirit so you walk in fervor and passion with the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. We, that's the, this is the only answer to a lost and corrupting society right now is for the believers to catch fire with the Holy Spirit, to walk in supernatural power like we're seeing right now, miracles happening on a regular basis, okay? I can't tell you at that business that I walked into and, uh, and, and the woman was healed of her hemorrhage and the tumor disappeared and the doctors were flabbergasted. They didn't know what to say to her because God supernaturally healed her, removed the tumor from her body, Everybody in that office is on fire for God. They're all seeking God now. Okay? I'm telling you, the authentic and genuine transforming presence of the Lord is available for you and me, and it is the only hope for the world. It's the only hope. So let's not be passive. Let's be passionate for the Lord. Let's, be, let's ask the Lord to just give us as a gift a hunger and a thirst for him. Point number three, ask for his presence to be real in your life. Just ask him. Just ask him. Lord, be real in my life. Pour out your spirit over me. Just ask him. Don't, don't say, oh, that's for those people that are on fire. That's for the pastor. That's, no, it's for you. you. If you have Jesus in your life, and if you don't, ask Jesus to come into your life, okay? Right now, ask him, forgive you of your sins, come into your life, save your soul, live inside of you. If you don't have a fire and a passion for the Lord, ask him to give it to you. John 6, verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life, Jesus says. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. The words he's spoken. Where are his words? Right here. I'm telling you, I, I, I know so many people that don't like to read. 
That's okay. Get your phone out. Get a Bible app. I, I, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. BibleGateway.com. It's great. I read New American Standard uh, version of the Bible, just like Jesus spoke it, New American Standard. Okay, that's a joke. You can smile. Okay. When I was a student, it, the 1977 version came out. That's, that's what I read. All right. But you can get BibleGateway.com, go to New American Standard, and the audio is there. Download the link, play it, listen to the scripture every day. Feed your spirit. Okay. You can do this every day. Feed your spirit, and the Lord will help you and give you strength. It, 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 not feeding your spirit with the word of the Lord. He, Jesus says his words are life. Not feeding your spirit with the word of the Lord is like not feeding your body with food. We need it. And he will help us to be on fire for him. Uh, Luke eleven thirteen 13, Amplified Bible says it this way. If you then on this Father's Day, evil as you are talking to dads, you know how to give good gifts to your, to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to the, those who ask and continue to ask him? Remember, I, I've taught you over and over how many times you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. As many times as you ask. Fresh infilling every morning, every noon, every night. Ask for more. Ask for more. This was the disciples' experience. They kept getting fresh infillings. Keep asking for more. Don't make some big theology, doctrinal statement about it. Just get more. Just ask for more. Somebody say amen. amen. That's, how we, that's how we get on fire. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Okay. Uh, Paul told, told the Colossians, you know, when we're at peace, it's a sign of destruction to our enemies. Okay. Peace is a weapon of our warfare. It is the God of peace, Romans 16, 20 says, that will soon crush Satan under our feet. Jesus is the prince of peace. We preach the gospel of peace. Okay, So walking in peace is our birthright. He wants us to have this. I've set the Lord continually before me. That's constantly. I will not be shaken. Psalm 16, verse 11. You will make known to me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. That's why we want his presence. His presence is practical. It's a practical thing. To seek his presence is to our own benefit. It's, it's a everyday, real-life experience encounter we can have with the Lord. Again, the title of the message today is His Presence is Practical. Number four, with a passion we must pursue God. Uh, we're commanded to do so, okay? So if we think we can be passive, that's a mistake. The scripture gives us the command. This is not, you know, so much of, 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 of the believers in God, in Jesus, in the earth, are like, you know, yeah, I believe in God. It's like we're doing God a favor by saying we believe in him. The, the command is to be passionate in our pursuit of the Lord. If we're not uh, passionately pursuing him, then we need to simply repent. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me for not being a passionate uh, pursuer of your presence and give me this passion as a gift uh, to pursue him. Look what 1 Corinthians 12. Three times we see this in 12, 14, uh, and twice in 14. But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I show you a still more excellent way. Then we have the love chapter. OK, because of love, he wants us to pursue his presence. This this phrase I've told you and I say it over and over again, earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit, he says, literally means to earnestly desire. It means to passionately or zealously lust after. He uses very, very passionate language that we're supposed to use to pursue his presence. An amplified version uh, says it this way in verse 31, but earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and best gifts and graces, the higher gifts, the choicest graces. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1, pursue love. He just finished all chapter 13 was about love, the love chapter, greatest 
uh, writing about love known to man, 1 Corinthians 13. And so he picks up the conversation. I'm talking about love, verse 1 of chapter 14. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly. There's that zealously lust uh, language again. Desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. To prophesy is to speak forth the word of God. Okay, that's all it is. It's just simply put. Now, does he give us prophetic messages? Absolutely. Absolutely he does. You know, I, I went to pray for somebody this, this past week, and I immediately started praying over their back. And they were surprised. That's where my pain is. Well, the Lord told me to pray for your back. And that's exactly where the pain was. And that's a, a simple example. But the Lord is always speaking. He who calls himself the word is always talking. I promise you, you're hearing his voice. You may not recognize it as his, vo his voice, but he's talking to you. He longs to draw us into an intimate relationship. So he says, uh, especially that you may speak forth the word of God. Verse, uh, again, amplified version of, of verse 1 in, in 1 Corinthians 14. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest. And earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, gifts. I, I, I like to call them armaments, okay? Armaments, it, you know, it, to, to, to not have the gifts of the Spirit operating in our life is like sending a Marine like Michael into battle with no gun. Who would send a soldier without his, his utility belt and his weapons and his gear? It makes no sense. That's about how much sense it makes for a Christian to live apart from the gifts of the Spirit. They're really armaments. They're necessary. They're required. We need them. And then verse 39 in chapter 14. Therefore, my brother, er desire earnestly, same construction, third time now, to prophesy and do not forbid to speak in tongues. So it, it, to, to zealously lust after, to go after with a passion the things of God will automatically break off lukewarmness off of us. We can't be lukewarm if we're pursuing the gifts of the Spirit, the things of God. Amen? All right. So that's a great cure and antidote to lukewarmness and growing cold in the Lord. Number five, the presence of God can and must be experienced. We can experience the presence of God. Jesus said, pray then this way, Matthew 6, 9 to 10. Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. That's a declaration. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're to declare that his kingdom would come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As I prayed for that woman uh, that the Lord healed and uh, caused the, the hemorrhaging to stop and the tumor to disappear, I declared to her, there are no tumors in heaven. Your will be done, Lord. No tumor on earth as it is in heaven. There's no tumors in heaven, so I declare no tumor here. In the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. He's the healer, okay? I'm just the conduit, you know, but he tells us to do these things. So we're going to pray for everyone to experience the presence of God. And I'm telling you right now, if you're listening to me and you're in this local area and you need a healing, get to this church because Jesus is regularly showing up here and healing people. And I make no apology for it. Okay, He's the healer. He is the healer. You, you know someone, bring them here. We'll pray for them. Wednesday night at 7, Sunday morning at 9 or 1045. Get here because the presence of God is healing people. We stopped at the end of the service last Sunday morning and pe people got healed. All right. The, 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 the world will ridicule this all day long. Okay. Go ask the doctors who were baffled at the tumor disappearing. Go, go ask the doctors who tested again, the baby with the cysts on the brain one week and gone the next week, you know, how they can explain this. They can't. They cannot. The people that have been healed of AIDS. Oh, pastor, you're exaggerating. No, the God who made the sun can do anything. But we need to ask him. His will is not always done. It's not always done. Listen to me carefully. If his will was always done, then why are we instructed to pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? 
Why, why pray for it if it's already going to be done anyway and we're supposed to be passive and lay back? That's baloney. It's a beautiful Hebrew word called baloney. You know I'm joking. It's not kosher. Baloney is not kosher. It's not a Hebrew word. Okay, But to say God won't heal is baloney. He will. He's waiting on us. You know, look, so, the, the, you know, I, I preached this last Sunday because the devil was taunted me because I was in the hospital because I, I just, you know, uh, carry a lot of heart disease. Okay. All right. So the devil's taunting me saying, look, you pray, you preach for healing and people get healed, but God's not going to heal you. I said, you know what? Maybe he won't. I, I don't know, but I'm declaring healing over my body and I'm declaring healing over everybody else. And I'm not going to stop. Okay. Yeah. I, even if I have to preach sitting down, it's okay. I'm still going to declare healing because he heals. He's told us if we'd ever try to take the credit when he heals, we'll never have to take the blame when he doesn't. Okay. We trust him. People are not going to get more sick because we pray for their healing. All right. So you with me? I'm going to keep going here. All right. Everybody still here? All right. Let's keep going. John 14, 11. Jesus really taught us that we can experience miracles and he wants to use miracles listen to this verse chapter 14 verse 11 in the gospel of john believe me that i am in the father and the father is in me otherwise believe because of the works themselves believe because of the miracles he says so look at the miracles believe i'm telling you that's why that entire office building and that entire business like 14 businesses in, in this building everyone is going uh, um, after God right now because they saw the woman be healed in their midst. Jesus said, believe because of the miracles. I'm going to say it again. You're in this area. Get here if you need a, a healing miracle. Miracles are a great experience. Acts 14, verse 3. Therefore, they spent a long time there. I said this, I shared this last Sunday, speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, who was testifying to the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done by their hands. Now, they stayed a long time. Uh, look at verse three uh, uh, in the Amplified Version. So Paul and Barnabas stayed there for a long time, speaking freely and fearlessly and boldly in the Lord, who continued to bear testimony to the word of his grace, that is, uh, uh, verifying and confirming that Jesus brings salvation, the gospel, granting signs and wonders to be performed by their hands. All right. It, you know, I, I shared this with you last Sunday. There was great opposition. Okay. Listen, friends, you know, whether it's in sitcoms or uh, TV shows or the movies, that people of faith are ridiculed all the time. People that believe in miracles are made fun of and ridiculed all the time. There's opposition. Okay. Yeah. So they faced opposition. Look what their response was. They stayed a long time. They decided to stay a long time. They spoke fearlessly and boldly in the face of the opposition. And then God confirmed their word with miracles. Look, it's going to get harder and harder for true believers in the Lord Jesus in this country. It's already very difficult all over the world. It's just hitting this country now. Okay? Don't be afraid. Remember the three-part message I, I preached several months ago. Maybe I'll do it again. Free from the fear of conflict. Free from the fear of suffering. And certainly free from the fear of death. They came against them. They beat them. They, they, Paul was constantly being attacked. Opposition came, so they decided, okay, we're putting, we're going to buy a house, get a mortgage. We're staying. We're staying. And they got bold. And God confirmed the preaching of the gospel with healing miracles. That's what we're asking the Lord to do. Number six, his perfect presence is the goal at the end of the age. The prophet says, speaking of the new Jerusalem, the city shall be 18,000 cubits around about, and the name of the city that day shall be the Lord is there. Wow. And what does the book of Revelation say of this city? 
And the city has no need, Revelation 21, verse 23, of the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of the Lord has illumined it, and its lamp is the Lamb, Jesus. See, his presence, his presence is so practical. Invite his presence into your life. And finally, number seven, uh, quickly, no matter what we're facing, his presence will see us through. First Peter 5, 10, after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. He's on your side. Remember, we just kept, kept singing the phrase of that last song. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. There may be suffering in this life. There may be diabetes. There may be heart disease. There may be cancer. But in the name of Jesus, we come against all of that. And even then, the Lord is with us. Whether we get healing this side of heaven or the ultimate healing going to heaven, the Lord is with us. I pray, pursue his presence because the presence of the Father, our Heavenly Father, is a very practical thing to do. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let's all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. You can clap to the Lord. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I like this summer dress code. I may just stay with it. I, amen. As long as whatever Orphalinda tells me to do. So. I wear the pants in my house. She just tells me which ones to put on. All right, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We love your presence. We love that you're always with us, that you never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that you are ever by our side. You're before us, behind us, around us above us, underneath us, you surround us with your love and we welcome your holy presence to be with us around the clock, 24 seven. Lord, just help us to be more mindful of your presence. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for having mercy on us, loving us in such a way that you gave us Jesus, paying the price for our mistakes, giving us new life here on earth, and all of eternity with you. For all these things, we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, you can clap to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to share one more thing with you before I sit down and turn it over to Carol. Um, we are preparing uh, um, food. We did this once before, and I'm just going to show you an example. Ernie taught us this. Uh, so, um, this, I think, is this beans or rice? This is beans, beans. Thank you, Ernie. So, uh, the Lord has blessed us. Um, I've acquired, uh, several pallets of beans and rice. And, uh, uh we started, uh, Wednesday, as I shared this, we have a sign up sheet right here. If you'd like a 50 pound be bag of beans and, or a 50 pound, uh, bag of rice, you can have one of each. I'll, I'll get it. Okay, we'll give it to you. Also, we're gonna we're gonna get uh, uh, um, uh, two, maybe three or, uh, pallets or, or more of the these fifty pound uh, bags. And we've done this before, as we've uh, blessed people. We'll order these mylar bags. Uh, we have uh, at, at one end we drop the uh, uh, anti moisture uh, desiccant packet in there. Desiccant is that the word? And then the anti-oxygen packet on the top or vice versa. And then we put the beans in or the rice in. And then we have the hot uh, iron things and we crimp it at the end. And overnight it goes like that. And this is good for at least 10 years. Now, uh, with the food shortages, and I'm going to speak just very directly to it. Uh, we need to be like the wise uh, virgins that Jesus talked about in the end times. There's Foolish ones, and there's wise ones. And the wise ones had enough, their lamps were full, and they had some extra. So it wouldn't it be great if you had some extra to feed somebody and share the love of God with, for some, with somebody if they needed food. All right, so we have a food expert right here. Uh, Bob is here with uh, Shepherd's Heart. And we're so thankful for that ministry. We support it, believe in it, endorse it, 1,000%. But here in this house, uh, we're going to prepare... Uh, this, and we'll have about a, what, about a buck and a quarter 
is, is all the cost of this. And we'll give as many away as uh, people want to put on their shelves at home. Okay. I want you to be prepared to always have extra and then some. Okay. Like Luke 11, the, the Lord told the parable about praying. He said, a friend came to another friend banging away on the door to put bread because another friend showed up that was hungry and he didn't have anything to give him. So I want us to be the person that can provide the bread, okay, <laughs> the food. And I want you to have enough. I don't want you to be uh, in peril. I want you to stay full of peace that you have. Uh, I know beans and rice is not the most uh, exciting food, I realize, uh, but it's what I grew up on. And so, so we, we're going to have this in a couple of weeks. We're going to be preparing a, a bunch of these uh, bags. And then if you want to have your own at home and do your own thing, put it in jars or whatever, it's okay. I'm going to bless you with your own 50-pound bag of beans or your own 50-pound bag of rice. If you want it, uh, just there's a sign-up sheet. See, Carol, put your name there, and the, uh, uh, we want to provide that for you. But we, we are convinced that the people of God uh, need to be walking in peace and calm and prepared. People say, oh, pastor, you're such a uh, worry wart. And I said, no, listen, very carefully. Uh, those, of, those of us that have homes, you have insurance on your home, fire insurance, right? You don't expect your house to burn. Uh, those of us that drive cars, by law, you have to have car insurance. You don't expect to have a wreck, do you? But you have insurance. A lot of us have life insurance. I don't expect to die, but I, so when I got it, when I, my kids were little, so there'd be some, you know, provide. I didn't expect to die, but I got insurance. This is simply food insurance. Okay. So what if you don't need it and there's no crisis? And you never need it. We'll just eat it. <laughs> no big deal. It's just insurance. So full of peace, I'd rather be prepared and not need it than need it and not be prepared. Is that reasonable? Amen. This is not a 50 pounds. This is about six or seven pounds. Okay. I, I, I'm not, I know I'm looking strong, but I'm not. Uh, yeah. 50 pounds, baby. That's right. I got it right here. No, this is about six or seven pounds, but we have 50 pound bags and we'll preparing, be preparing little bags like this. Okay. All right. That's a good one, Diane. Thank you for that. I know I look strong, but here we go. Go ahead, Carol. Come close us out. Okay. Thank you. Just now you can give online, and you can give several different ways. You can give online at ctkwaco.org/give. You can give um, through the church center app. You can put an envelope or a check in the basket. Um, just lots of different ways you can give. So, do we have a blessing to do today, Mel? Okay, well, I will just pray over it then. So, Father, I thank you for all of those who are about to give. Lord, I thank you that we have the opportunity to sow into the kingdom. I thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing. I thank you, Father for the work that we're doing as a body here to prepare ourselves and, and to seek your presence, God. I pray right now for the peace of the Holy Spirit to just surround each and every one of us and uh, just bless this offering and bless each person who is able to give and bless those who are unable to give today, God. I just pray for your generosity to overflow in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's see if we can watch this video. I'm gonna, uh, it's about Israel, so you guys know we're going to Israel. Where the Creator encountered His creation, experience where faith was formed, history established, and supernatural released. We invite you to come with us and visit the land where Jesus walked, where he demonstrated to us how to live supernaturally, where he healed, forgave, and set prisoners free. 
scene where Jesus showed us true unconditional love as he defeated death once and for all on the cross. So have you always wanted to walk where Jesus walked and visit the actual place where he visited? Well, friends, make this your year. Join us for the Ramiro Pena Ministries Holy Land Tour. Come receive powerful teaching from Pastor Pena as he brings the biblical stories to life. We'll visit the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended up into heaven. Visit the Garden of Gethsemane and pray in the place Jesus prayed on the night of his betrayal. We'll celebrate the resurrection in a special communion time at the Garden Tomb where Christ ultimately overcame death for us all. So sign up today for this amazing trip as we tour the city of Jerusalem. Explore the tunnels behind the Western Wall. Join us as we float in the Dead Sea. Experience breathtaking views as we ascend by cable car up the majestic Masada. See Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Visit the ruins of Capernaum. Travel in boat to the Sea of Galilee. See the beautiful Aquadet Accessoria. And just like Jesus, be baptized in the Jordan River. So this is your year. Experience all that God has for you on this year's RPM Holy Ghost. Visit RomeroPena.org for payment details and to sign up. Okay, so yeah, I'm really excited. It is getting really close. We are going September 4th through the 13th. It's $28.95 for the land package, which is a great deal. That includes all of your hotels. It includes breakfast and lunch every day. And it includes um, entrance into all of the sites that we're going to see. I can't wait for the, I mean, it's, okay, so I'm, I'm a little Israeli junkie. I'm sorry. But I can't wait because it's been a couple of years. And I'm so excited to go back. And I hope that you guys can come with us. Um, all right, stand up and I will bless you. God bless you, Christ the King. God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless you coming in. God bless you going out. God bless you in the cities. God bless you in the fields. God bless you to find favor with God and man. God bless you. What can you do? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail, and it makes me want to shout. Woohoo! You guys have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night. Tour Israel, the birthplace of our faith. So come see where the Creator encountered His creation. Experience where faith was formed, history established, and supernatural released. We invite you to come with us and visit the land where Jesus walked, where He demonstrated to us how to live supernaturally, where He healed, forgave, and set prisoners free. See where Jesus showed us true unconditional love as He defeated death once and for all on the cross. So have you always wanted to walk where Jesus walked? and visit the actual place where he visited? Well, friends, make this your year. Join us for the Ramiro Pena Ministries Holy Land Tour. Come receive powerful teaching from Pastor Pena as he brings the biblical stories to life. We'll visit the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended up into heaven. Visit the Garden of Gethsemane and pray in the place Jesus prayed on the night of his betrayal. We'll celebrate the resurrection in a special communion time at the Garden Tomb where Christ ultimately overcame death for us all. So sign up today for this amazing trip as we tour the city of Jerusalem, explore the tunnels behind the Western Wall. Join us as we float in the Dead Sea, experience breathtaking views as we ascend by cable car up the majestic Masada. See Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Visit the ruins of Capernaum, travel in boat to the Sea of Galilee. See the beautiful Aquades Accessoria, and just like Jesus, be baptized in the Jordan River. So this is your year. Experience all that God has for you on this year's RPM Holy Land Tour. Visit RomeroPena.org for payment details and to sign up.